Hello and welcome to HBO's Crypto Corner for Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. We have a few things to talk about, so let's get started. Has Nessie finally been found? Seasoned Loch Ness Skipper shares images of monster-like shape caught on sonar. It's the mythical creature that has captured the attention of people around the world for decades. And now the search for the Loch Ness Monster has been taken up a gear. Sean Sloggy, a seasoned Loch Ness skipper, was cruising across the loch when he spotted a mysterious shape on sonar. While the source remains unclear, Stoggy, 30, admits he's never seen anything like it. The strangeness of it was chilling. It's the sort of thing that leaves you speechless, he said. And this is the skipper in question. And here is a radar image of what could be Nessie. The sonar indicated that a large object was lurking at a depth of around 98 meters, described by the stunned skipper as the biggest thing I've ever seen. Slog and maritime pilot Liam McKenzie, 29, were doing their usual rounds at Cruise Loch Ness when they stumbled upon the strange shape. On September 22, 2024, while preparing for another vessel's arrival, Sloggy's sonar flashed up. The sonar indicated that a large object was lurking at a depth of around 98 meters. He described it as the biggest thing I've ever seen. With its elongated shape and distinct features hinting at air pockets, the team couldn't help but wonder if the sonar reading was tied to the infamous Loch Ness Monster. Despite returning to the scene to investigate, the mysterious contact had vanished, leaving the team baffled. I think this is the location where it happened. On the lock. So, did this individual actually get radar of Nessie? That's a good question. It seems possible. If so, then I think more radar and sonar need to be deployed out on Loch Ness to try and get a good profile of Nessie if it's still there. Assuming this is Nessie and not something else. No beef jerking around. Possible Sasquatch spotted in Oklahoma. An apparent Bigfoot has made his or her inevitable Tech Talk debut, and the footage is actually the best to date of a Sasquatch in the wild as opposed to a snack commercial. Here's the big hairy deal. A video posted Wednesday that has since gone viral shows what sure as heck seems to be a Bigfoot just chilling against a tree in a wooded area of Lawton about three hours from Oklahoma City. First of all, are they ribbing us with this? That is so obviously a person in a costume. And that's exactly what it was revealed to be later on. It turned out to be a promotion for a head shop, what is known as a head shop. 
So it's not real. Anybody with half a brain can tell, can look at this and see that's not real. That's obviously a guy in a suit. Because they revealed a photograph of the person in the suit without the head on later on. When they confirmed it was merely a promotion for a head shop. I think it was in Lawton or I'm not sure if it was in Lawton or Oklahoma City. I'm not really sure. But this is the kind of nonsense that we have to deal with. And it's just, it's ridiculous. It really is. But I suppose we can't expect too much from TMZ. Other than celebrity gossip. Pretty ingenious costume, but that's all it was. It was just a costume. Eerie figure photographed on the side of Michigan Road. A Michigan motorist snapped a peculiar photo that appears to show an eerie figure lurking on the side of the road. The intriguing image, seen below, was reportedly posted to a Michigan Facebook group earlier this week by an individual named Wink Barnett, who explained that they took the picture while driving in the state's upper peninsula. Trying to catch the sunset, they said, I think I caught something else along the side of the road in the form of a curious anomaly resembling a wispy figure lurking in a nearby field. The weird photo spawned an array of theories online with many suggesting that the spooky looking figure could have been a ghost, a Bigfoot, or perhaps even a skinwalker. Uh, could that be possibly a Sasquatch? Or a Skinwalker, although I thought Skinwalkers were in the West, not in Michigan. I mean, what exactly is that? Or could it just be something on the windshield? And the individual thought it was something standing there. But it could turn out to be just bird poop. It looks a bit it looks a bit like the consistency of bird poop. What they should have done was stopped on the side of the road, gotten out and taken the photograph, so there wouldn't be any confusion. To make sure it's not dog poop or something else. But who knows? I mean, what the heck? What is it? We don't know. Amateur mistake, I suppose, to stop and take a picture through your windshield rather than getting out of the vehicle to confirm what it is or deny what it or 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 just dispel what it is I should say so what is it we don't know video hydrophone captures echolocation sounds from Lake Champlain monster here's a video On September 20th, 2024, Champ Search President Katie Elizabeth aboard her research vessel Kelpie 2, which was outfitted with an array of cutting-edge sonar and hydrophone equipment, captured echolocation clicks similar to dolphin and orca echolocation. Although she does not believe these animals are a cetacean species, this ability could have developed over time through evolutionary adaptation.
There is a unique signature in this echolocation recording that has not been captured in previous recordings. There is a distinct buzzing sound, which is a complicated harmonic structure heard in several cetacean species before catching prey. Here are some comparisons. Atlantic white-sided dolphin, Lagenahenchus acutus. Orca, Orchinus orca, or killer whale. Beluga whale, Delphinapterus lucas. This is not the first time echolocation has been recorded in Lake Champlain. Katie has previously recorded similar echolocation recordings, which have been analyzed by scientists for the History Channel, Discovery Channel, Science Channel, as well as by scientists in Japan, and stated authentic and unlike any species known to be in a freshwater lake. She has recorded known fish that inhabit Lake Champlain and man-made sounds that do not fit into the category of what has been recorded in this recording signature. Katie Elizabeth has done extensive bioacoustics work with cetaceans, whales and dolphins, and manatees, recording their sounds in the North Atlantic and off the Florida coast, studying the known fish sounds in Lake Champlain and sounds made by man. Here are some recordings of known fish and man-made sounds that are not comparable to the echolocation recordings captured. Sturgeon thunder, vocalizations, Lake Sturgeon, Asipensa fulvescens. Freshwater drum. Sheephead. Aplodinotus grunians. Alwife. Alosa pseudoharangus. An orchestra of common fish that inhabit Lake Champlain. Man made sound of a boat motor. There is, in fact, an unknown species echolocating in Lake Champlain. Hopefully, by using more and more advanced technology in the years to come, it will be proven to science as a catalogued species. So what exactly is echolocating in Lake Champlain? Is it Champ? That's a good question. It's either Champ or it's something else. Could it possibly be just a more mundane creature? Who really knows? I, I really don't think anybody can, can say one way or the other. But it's quite fascinating. And good on Katie. Good job. She did a good job with this. And the good thing is, she did make the comparisons with other echo-located fish and, and mammals. 
Yes, whales are mammals, ladies and gentlemen. She made comparisons to perhaps see if what she had might have been a misidentification of some sort. It doesn't seem like it is a misidentification. But who knows? But it's fascinating. Quite fascinating. Finally, Michigan cops stop quote unquote Bigfoot walking down road. A pair of Michigan State Troopers made a rather unusual stop last week when they pulled over to speak with a Sasquatch that they saw walking down the side of a road. According to a local media report, the odd encounter occurred last Wednesday evening in the city of Cadillac. Recounting the proverbial Bigfoot bust, Public Information Officer Lieutenant Derek Carroll explained that the troopers noticed the costume individual while out on patrol and took quick action because they knew this wasn't a cutout. Curious as to what the quote-unquote creature was doing, the cops stopped the foe Sasquatch and quickly determined that he was simply roaming around rather than causing any mischief. The officer subsequently snapped a photo with the quote-unquote beast and shared it on social media, marveling with amusement that it turns out Bigfoot is smaller than our troopers. Expressing a similar sense of humor about the strange Sasquatch stop, Carol mused that I can say I've been in the state police for almost 30 years. It's the first known sighting and encounter troopers have had with Bigfoot. Huh. Interesting, but we know that there have been police encounters with possible Sasquatch in the past. Maybe not in Michigan, but in other places, in other states. So, I wanted to end this kind of on a funny note, kind of a humorous note. And I, I, I find nothing wrong with somebody dressing up in a suit, as long as they're not trying to hoax something. And I don't think the person in the suit was trying to hoax anything. Just having a bit of fun. And that's going to do it for this week. We want to thank you very much for tuning in. You guys are the heart of the show. I always say that, but I always mean it, and I'll continue as long as you guys want me to. And, by the way, check out my latest UFO corner about the chase, UFO chase over Tehran, Iran in 1976. By the way, I'm going to link that below for you guys to check out. So, until next week, y'all be good or be good at this Patreon Scripto Corner.